half in the bag. All right, you guys have fun. Well, Mike, it's official. We've reached the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> we might be below the bottom of the barrel. I don't even know what this show is anymore. Show? Last episode, we watched, we just watched an episode of Night Court. <laughs> <laughs> now here we are. <laughs> How did we get here? We got here because so far 2023 has been just awful. I don't even think I've watched a movie. M. Night Shyamalan has a new movie out. It was the number one movie over the weekend. I didn't even know it existed until yesterday. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> and then uh, something else came out, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Well, that's not out yet. Oh. It's already the biggest movie of all time, though. Okay, uh, what else came out? So. We should point out, though, because uh, this is uh, every year people say, are you gonna make, we used to do a thing called F you, it's January. We gotta be careful with YouTube now. YouTube won't let us swear anymore. <laughs> we can't say f or f Well, the thing is, we stopped kind of doing that because that years ago, that stopped being the model. Yeah. It used to be January was the month that studios dumped their crappy movies. Into the theaters. Into theaters. Now, even before like the pandemic stuff, that kind of stopped being the model. Now they dump their crap all year. <laughs> all year Into huh? the theaters. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, but some good movies have been released in January. It's not really the business model anymore. So that's, that's why we don't do that anymore. Uh, but this is sort of the spiritual successor to those videos. Right. Uh, because there's been lots of crap released this year that nobody's ever heard of. Yes, and, and this is our official first video of what crap came out this year so far. <laughs> And we had a little system of, uh, of determining that because, you know, movies come out all the time. And I say, oh, yeah, that looks like a cool movie. And it came out six months ago. Never heard of it. This is this, release dates mean nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and garbage movies come out all the time. You go to Tubi. <laughs> oh, Tubi's got the best garbage. And you find just atrocious things. So I, I, I drew the line at what is listed on imdb.com as an official 2023 release. Okay. And I had a very simple method. I sorted the movies uh, by rankings, review rankings. User ratings, right? User yep. ratings from worst up. And, uh, and then I watched the trailers for every awfully reviewed movie. And I had a specific criteria for the trailer. Which, which, uh, it's, does it open with a drone shot of a car driving down a lonely highway? <laughs> this came for me today. Oh, uh, that's a little long. We'll call it opens with a drone shot. That was the criteria. And, uh, I found five movies that qualified because, uh, it's no longer impressive that you have a drone. No. And it's no longer impressive that you have drone shots uh, that simulate old school Hollywood helicopter shots or crane shots, dolly shots, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's not impressive anymore because that, they do that to hook you in. Oh, it's a real movie. Look at that, that wide overhead oh, shot. It's just like The Shining. What up? Oh. What do you think is up with Carla? Do you believe in that Carl? Come on. Boy. Then you see the first like couple scenes and then... Ironically, Snowfall is the movie we're going to talk about in depth yeah. has the opposite problem. All these other ones, you see the drone shot and it looks semi-professional and then it cuts to the regular shots from the movies and they look awful. This uh, Snowfall, the drone shots look like super low res compared to the rest of the footage. Mm. When they first show up at the cabin, there's like a drone shot coming down to the front door of the house and it, it's like horribly compressed and it looks like digitally sharpened or something and it looks awful. And then it cuts to a regular shot from the movie and it looks pretty good. Andy, you might wanna sit down for this. But the, the films that made our list. I just wanna kill myself. Oh, oh. Did you say something? No, I didn't say anything. Did you hear what I said? No. Uh, well, Snow Falls, that's the movie that we picked at random, selected from a hat. <laughs> uh, the Devil Beneath. 
Uh, and here's their drone shots playing under my explanations. Yeah. Those who call Walking Karma with Michael Madsen. Oh yeah, that was sad to see. Mm. And then the third guest, the lowest rated of them all. I should have never called. Then why are you here? I'm here to warn you. It topped out at a 4.2. What was Snowfalls? That's right in the middle, right? Snowfalls is right in the middle. 3.1. Yeah. All righty, my friends. I would like to make a toast. So, let's get this train going. Snowfalls, the movie. <laughs> Welcome to our Half the Bag episode about Snowfalls. Uh, uh, yes. It's, it's a title that works on so many levels because snow falls from the sky and they go to the town of Snow Falls in the film. It works on many levels, mainly two. Snowfalls, a.k.a. some Zoomers can't handle a little cold. That was the biggest thing. The... Wait, shut up. I've got an intro. Oh, my God. Look out, idiots! It's Snowfalls, a movie released this year that you probably haven't or will never see. Five young people inexplicably go to a remote cabin in the woods to quietly celebrate New Year's Eve. As most young people in their 20s do. That's when disaster strikes. A huge epic, a huge epic snowstorm suddenly shows up. Out of nowhere, because it's the 1890s. <laughs> and nobody has a cell phone that says there's a giant snowstorm coming. You can't predict these things. And you don't look this information up when traveling to a remote cabin. In the middle of nowhere, yeah. Uh, oh, then they lose power. They also lose their minds. And the actors lose their dignity by appearing in this boring trash. Why are we reviewing this film? Well, because fuck this year. Uh, <laughs> You're drinking a, a spooky Halloween beer in pumpkin, January. Ew, February. Gross. Pumpkin pie spiced porter. Scary good. See, I'd probably like that. I don't know why you're drinking it. Because there's nothing left. We don't have any beer left. You're oh drinking Miller High Life. That's true. What could you possibly be doing right now? Anyway. It's time to talk about Snowfalls, a film that uh, was mind-bogglingly bad. Yeah, it, it's ironic that a big part of the movie is sleep deprivation, because you're not gonna have that problem if you watch the movie. I oh. sent you a text like 30 minutes into it, where I said, I feel like I've been watching this for three hours. Yes, the movie's <laughs> 80 minutes long, but it feels like 880 <laughs> minutes long. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what the story is behind this. I. I We've never heard of it. I've never heard of the, the director. His name's Colton Tran. Slash co-star. Chill, okay? You're probably like one of those weirdos who wears like two condoms or something. Uh, he's in the film. Uh, he is an actor. All five main characters are little, little tiny actors. <laughs> they're little people. They're like 20 something years old, but they're all little people and they, they're all little actors. They're all in something. Like they're all working actors. They're all working actors. Like and one of them was on a few episodes of Teen Wolf, the MTV show. Okay. Um, and in the trailer, there's two bigger named actors, uh, Patrick Fabian, uh, who is an older character actor. He most recently, uh, according to IMDb, he's been on a ton of episodes of Better Call Saul. So that's probably his most recent like claim to fame, which is you know, popular series, but you can get him for a Zoom call for five seconds for this movie. Right, and then um, Jonathan Bennett, uh, who I recognize because he is on a lot of those baking shows. Oh. Like, uh, uh, I've seen him on TV before. Okay. Uh, he's He does those cooking, Halloween baking contest shows. As himself? Yeah, I think so. And I think he's he's also some kind of actor. I don't really know the, either of these two guys very well. I don't know any of these people very well. Yeah. Um, but the two big names in the film both appear on Zoom call, on the phone, and then on the laptop. Yeah. And that's... That's it. 
They're like, and, and the, so, because the one, the older guy, plays the main character's dad. Yes. And not the main character, but the the. I would say he's the main co-main character. Co-main, yeah. There's only five characters, but uh, he's the, the the kid that whose father owns this it's house. It's Kit. No, no, sorry, that's River. River. I got all their names, Jay. Oh, that's great. River. Be very helpful. Okay, so yeah, River is the rich kid whose dad owns the cabin. Yeah. Um, there's Study Girl, who's studying in the car on the way there. You know, did you did you pick up on the fact that she's a, a med student? Trust me, med student. Yeah, I I, I recognize that. <laughs> did you pick up on that? She knows a lot about hypothermia. The the, the writer director co star. He just went to Wikipedia and copy pasted large chunks, and that's her dialogue. Most people think that booze will keep you warmer, but in reality, it does the opposite. You know, alcohol prevents your body from lots of its healthy reflexes. One of which is keeping the core body temperature warm in colder weather. Uh, she also had some kind of backstory with cancer. Someone in her family died of cancer. So I have her a study girl slash cancer girl. Her name's Eden. I'm cold. Um, then there's Paranoid M. M short for Emma, I assume. That's the girl who was the hypochondriac who yeah. kept saying her stomach hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, Kit is our, our uh, director, Colton Tran. He's just there to party. He's, he lives on the edge, man. He didn't want to put a seatbelt on. <laughs> the first, well, the first line of dialogue is, I don't want to wear my seatbelt. I live on the edge, man. I'm like, is, it, is that a joke? Yeah, well, Kit refuses to wear a seatbelt, which I think is worse. Well, I'm sorry that I like to live on the edge, okay? Uh, and then there's, <laughs> then there's Andy, and Andy is the vain uh, content man. Yes. He's yes. the man who... Which factors into the story in no way whatsoever. Zero. Uh, he, 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 he fancies himself a, vlog, a vlogger slash uh, content man. Yeah, influencer, whatever. Some, something, but we've never... He, he claims to have like 20,000 followers or something, and then... You'd uh, think that would come into play, or he's like, we're in trouble, we're stranded here, let me try and reach out to my follower. Nope. It's basically the, the core group of characters. It's the movie is essentially a remake of Cabin Fever, but in Cabin Fever you have uh, a, a, a flesh-eating virus that makes everyone go crazy. This movie you have nothing that makes everyone go crazy. You have people that were cold for half a day, so they lose their minds. But the dynamic it's three guys, two girls, two of them are a couple. Uh, one of them is friend zoned by one of the other girls. It's all very, very similar to Cabin Fever. Uh, it, yeah, and it's very simple, and then it becomes bafflingly dumb. Yes. Um, and boring. That's uh, the thing, this isn't a funny bad movie. We're not talking about like a money plane no, here. No, but it's, it's oddly fascinating that it would get made. Everyone in this movie is fine. They're all professional working actors. The, the lead that's... girl who played Eden was was convincing. Everyone else was just like, okay. Yeah, they were fine. Compared to, like, I watched the trailers for all these other movies. They all look like crap visually. They all have bad acting. I skimmed through a little bit of The Third Guest, and, like, it looks like a Neil Breen movie. Every shot is, like, this claustrophobic close-up. It's really bizarre. And then this movie looks really good. Like, for a low-budget movie, like, the, the cinematography is nice. There's lots of, like, if it's not natural lighting, they do a good job of replicating natural lighting. And Yeah, there's, there's money behind it, or just someone that really knows cameras and lenses and where to place the camera to get good lighting with natural light from the windows. It's a good-looking movie. And then it's just like the dumbest shit you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. There's uh, like a like a incongruity between how it looks and the actual content. We need firewood river. That's an antique. Oh boy. <laughs> it's a, it's a terrible script. Um, should we should we go a brief overview of the plot? I, I I laughed. I laughed aloud when it starts. It's it starts with a close-up of a radio, and it's like cycling through radio stations. There's a there's been a horrible plane crash. Following a tragic plane crash in the East Hills area, we're still awaiting information of how many passengers were on board the aircraft, but it is believed to be weather-related. I'm like, kids going to a cabin in the woods on New Year's. I don't know. I don't know much else about it other than that. And I thought, 
maybe the plane crashed. The, the pilot went insane and crashed the plane. And then he got all burnt up and he looks like two Face, and he's walking around the woods <laughs> and he's, he's your killer. Yeah. I thought, I thought that's, I'm like, why do you tell us about this plane crash? It ain't got nothing to do with the movie. It's a red herring. All the all the explanations for what's going on are, are vague red herrings. A highly contagious SARS-like virus seems to be spreading rapidly overseas. Oh, no. And the only one that makes any logical sense is the stupidest, which is that they all go crazy from being stuck in a cabin in the snow for a day. Well, we'll get to that. But, <laughs> but the, the lines were just like, I don't know if it's the script or the direction, but the lines were just like, the first line is, Hey, how much longer? Are we there yet? And then uh, Kit, the influencer guy, he's like, GPS says 15 minutes. GPS says 15 minutes. Thank God. Okay, good. Yeah, it's very like and line, line, cut, line, 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 cut. And, and, and then they get, the, the point is they're going to this, nice house. Mm -hmm. I don't, I would even call it a cabin in the woods. It's a very large mansion. Mm -hmm. And they're going there to celebrate New Year's Eve. And then uh, they go there and it's like deathly quiet. <laughs> they're just sitting around bored. <laughs> One guy, Colton Tran says, let's do shots. And it's like 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, he's the party guy, but they do shots and then they all like, fall asleep and wait around. And then it's like a, a very quick montage of them celebrating New Year's Eve. And then, oh, she says, hold on. <laughs> Too many notes. Oh my God. Okay, so young people make dinner. So what's for dinner? Stir fry and everyone's helping. A stir fry. Yeah. We're making a stir fry. And then we watch them Party! do that. <laughs> These are the scenes that you have happen so you get to know your characters. <laughs> like we know that they can make stir fry. The, the young people don't do this stuff though. <laughs> like I, I, was, I was thinking in my head, I would, I would rather see, I would, it would be enjoyable to watch a movie with this premise just with old people. <laughs> like five old people, like sure. people in their 80s, yeah. go, will go to have a quiet New Year's Eve at a cabin. And there's like a so screen. nice to get out of the city. Right, right. And they're just, well, how long? If the GPS, the gyps, well, the, the old person will get it wrong. <laughs> my Garmin, my Garmin says 15 minutes. Oh, good, because I got to go. And then they get there and there's They point like, out that the one guy doesn't have his uh, seatbelt on. He's like, oh, I forgot. Yeah, right, right. And that's the reason he's not wearing a seatbelt. And they're all just driving quietly. They're not just like, like, mm -hmm. like the kid, kids in their 20s would be like, blah, 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 give me your phone. <laughs> They'd be talking nonstop and they're just sitting quietly driving. And then they get there and they're just like so reserved and quiet and yeah. no one's, no one's doing drugs, no one's smoking weed, no one's like, there is like some kind of sex stuff, sort of. He, he jokes around, he climbs on her and says, let this bed will make for a great sex bed. And she says, my stomach hurts. And he's like, and then it, the scene just ends. It's just over, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, but old people, and then you have like a like a scream like a scream face like a ghost face killer <laughs> shows up in the window and it's just like like I'm gonna go kill some teens in the woods and it's just a bunch of elderly people. Oh, he goes, oh. Um, I would like this is a little twist. Sure. But th so what I'm saying is, for a movie written and directed by a young person, strangely all the characters act like they were written by like 75 year old person yeah and or directed by an old person mm -hmm. hey, here's where you're gonna turn on dick clark's rockin new year's eve and eat your stir fry don't forget to take your cholesterol and your blood pressure pills <laughs> but that that was their night yeah. and it's like and also it's it's apparently it's uh, uh we'll talk about the cold that's oh, the that's... main villain of the film. Yes, we'll get into that. And how completely illogical. Well, well. also, continuing what you were saying, it also the movie feels very, like, prudish in a way that's weird. Like, again, comparing this to Cabin Fever, which is like, 
a horny nightmare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Sorry, I would describe... But yeah, like, the, there's a part in the movie, later in the movie, one of the, one of the characters is hallucinating, and he's hallucinating that the, the main girl is, like, seducing him. Yeah. And she's, like, out of focus in the background. She's, like, taking the, the sleeve off her jacket, but she has, like, a full turtleneck underneath. And he's, like, stop or you'll get cold. It's like she's fully dressed. This is the seduction scene. It would make sense if she was, like, naked and, like, come to bed with me. Or let's get That's in the so- hot shower, and then they start boning in the hot shower. Yeah, which and- is sort of in the movie. They put that in the trailer to give you the illusion that right. there's some sort of life and, and sex in this film when there isn't. Right. There's the one girl that takes her top off, kind of, but she's from the back, and it's because they want to get their, they're, they're trying to get body heat from they, each other. They, well, they jump into the hot tub in the trailer, and you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, and then it, that, that scene is like 10 seconds long. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're right on that point is like, you make a movie like this for two reasons to show naked people and to have a violent murders. Mm-hmm. And neither happen. Nothing happens, yeah. Almost nothing happens. There's a couple hallucinations that are very jarring and look terrible. And we'll get into them when we talk about the cold. Yeah. Yes, so here's... This the, is like the looming threat, us talking about the cold. Right. <laughs> We're going to get to it. That's, that's every, uh, every October, November for us. <laughs> We're, we, we've been through all this shit. I, I would say that this, this movie was made by a bunch of little assholes from California. Well, that, that's what but I was thinking. Is the director, it, like kid, like he's never been outside of California. Well, he, it says he grew up in Utah. And uh-huh. so I don't know where. Utah can get cold, maybe in southern Utah. I, I really don't know. But yeah, it does come across comical. How like, n- not ill prepared they are, but how unrealistic. So the whole thing is, uh, snow, uh, the, the power goes out because of all the bad weather. It's snowing constantly. The roads, they can't get out of the cabin because the roads are completely blocked off by snow, even though they never seem to get more than like an inch of snow through the whole movie, right. even though it never stops snowing. Yes. Except for the shots where it does. Yes. Um, so they're trapped. And over the course of one day, they all start to lose their minds. Right. And yeah. they, they kind of have some like allusions to Oh, maybe there's something evil in the snow. Uh, what if the snow is, I don't know, somehow contaminated? And it's like, well, that's stupid, so it won't be that. The only thing it could be, they talk about, oh, we got to stay awake, because if we fall asleep, this is more Wikipedia uh, sniping. They, so they all try to stay awake, so it's like, oh, okay, so this is they're going crazy from sleep deprivation. Right. That's the only thing that makes sense logically in the movie. It's not evil snow. There's no. not toxins in the snow. They, they eat the snow. That's why they think that, because yeah, they make snow yeah. cones for... So they can say, we ate the snow. Maybe the snow is making us go crazy. one brings snow cone juice. Maybe they just poured booze on it. I don't remember. They had, it was colorful. Okay. Yeah, but so, okay, so there, there's this very large property, house, cabin, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it has a big fireplace. It, of course, has electricity some sort of heater. Um, there is a generator. There's a generator, but it's out of gas. Well, I kept waiting. They keep cutting to the establishing shot of the house. And one of the characters early in the movie makes a snowman. And that snowman is so prominent in the foreground of all those establishing shots. I was like, oh, that's going to be their way of showing how much the snow accumulates. Yeah. Yeah. By the end, the, you're just going to see like the top of the snowman's head. But every time they cut to that ho- the exterior throughout the whole movie, throughout several days, it never accumulates any more than where it's at at the beginning of the movie. Because they don't understand about snow accumulation. <laughs> <laughs> they put a plug-in effect of snow in the foreground of the shot. Right. Um, which they couldn't do for the scenes that they actually shot outside. So it just coincidentally, every time they go outside, the snow stops. But we see the car after like three or four days of them being there. There's like a little bit of snow on the top of the car. None of it. None of it adds up. Just get in the car and drive away. Do they ever say where they are? Where is snow falls? Um, I don't think so. The North Pole. <laughs> I mean, because that's the thing. Is like, sure, a bomb cyclone can happen. You know, like recently, I think it was Buffalo, New York, got just tons yeah. of snow, like six feet, whatever. Um, that can happen. Usually that's not associated with temperatures that are negative 300 degrees. There's that too, which yeah. would, Which you would need 
to worry about dying yes. while having a shelter. This is like like exposure on Mount Everest. Kind of <laughs> that's how they're treating it. Yeah. See, they have a house that's presumably insulated. Mm -hmm. So regardless, uh, uh, even if it was zero out, uh, the house probably would, would top out at 50 or 40 degrees. Completely survivable temperatures to where you could sleep. Yes. And then that's the whole thing is like that idiot, <laughs> medical student, just <laughs> says that that's, we can't sleep. Yeah. Because if you sleep. Is that on the first night or like the second night? It's like night? the first night. Yeah. And, and she says you can't have sugar. Yeah. Because you'll get a sugar rush, but then you'll crash. Sugar isn't a good idea. What's to stay awake? And it, also a sugar rush is not scientifically accurate either. Sure. That's like, uh, uh, what do they call it? Not an ur urban myth. Um, old maid, old, old, old wives tale. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you give them a bunch of sugar. I mean, sure, yes, you know, it, it raises your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So she's like, uh, we can't, you, 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 you can't fall asleep because uh, uh, if you fall asleep inside the house, yeah. You'll die. People can live in a tent in the fucking cold. <laughs> you just, you might get frostbite. That'll happen before hypothermia. Right. Uh, Which before, never happens in this movie. No. Yeah. B before your body just dies, <laughs> your, your, your fingers will turn black and your toes will turn black. Your nose will fall off. So that'd be pretty creepy. Because all your blood goes to your inner organs. Yeah. And your, it says, Forget about your extremities, your nose, your those aren't important, your heart, your lungs, and, and all that is. Yeah. And so that will happen before you die. Mm -hmm. And so it's snowing out. It can't be like that cold. Yeah. And then they have blankets and they're inside a house. And then and Well, and they have a huge ass fireplace. And they even bring this up, and it drove me nuts. Yeah. Because they're like, uh, oh, we don't have any wood to burn in the fireplace. They're like, what are you talking about? We have wood everywhere. This whole house is, we got tables, we got chairs. And the kid's like, no, those are antiques. So that's their justification for never throwing anything in the fireplace. And the kid even says, it's Fred even says, like, uh, your dad, would your dad prefer you die or ruin some antiques? It's like, yeah. That, that makes sense. Why are we ignoring that? It's only until three of the five main characters are dead that he decides to start burning the antiques. <laughs> so there's a limit. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, I'm sure not everything is an antique. If I, go get one of the beds from upstairs. You know, like, sure, chop up, you know, there's so much raw material in the house. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, well, and they're surrounded by the woods. That one girl says, are we out of dry firewood? Uh, okay. So I guess we are, I don't know a lot about camping and this kind of stuff, but I guess we're to assume that if they were to go outside and chop down a tree, it It'd wouldn't too wet to, burn well. That can, yeah, that can happen. So. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you have to dry out firewood. But, um, but just the fact that, like, it's not a science fiction movie. It's not like our sun burnt out and the temperature outside is negative. 500 degrees. That'd be Fahrenheit. a better justification for what's happening. Yeah, and so the whole like premise, uh, I, I would have been okay with toxic snow. <laughs> sure. They ate toxic snow and they went crazy, but. But we don't know, that may be what happened. The movie's too vague to let true. us know for it's sure. It's ambiguous. It's keeping it ambiguous, just like The Shining. Right, that's right. Just like The Shining. Just like The Shining. Except without all the snow that makes you feel like they are isolated and trapped. Oh, yeah. Remember that in The Shining? There's a shit ton of snow everywhere. Yeah. There's not a, a quarter of an inch of snow. Uh, yeah, so the main core of the movie is girl decides that no one can fall asleep because they will die of hypothermia. And then the lack of sleep causes hallucinations. Yes. Which <sighs> hallucinations would really kind of be like a couple days three days, maybe longer, and it's like one night. Well, the, the first thing that happens, and this is before I even understood that they were supposed to be crazy already. Mm. They're in the kitchen. The one guy's in the kitchen, and they have the, the stove going, the stove top. Ah, uh, yes. And he immediately slams his hand down on it. And I was like, what's happening? They didn't even establish that they've gone crazy. It just, ha he just he does so it. He was so cold, he just wanted that heat. 
And then, the, but they're like, why did you do that? And he just doesn't say anything. It was so weird. It was a weird way to introduce that idea that they're starting to lose their minds. Because I didn't even, it wasn't even established yet. This is me like stretching it, but I realized the power's out. The gas was still working. Yeah. Hey, you know, with most gas stoves, you could just ignite it with a match. So maybe that was like, yeah, it was because he's like, ooh, heat. Uh, and so that was like, oh, we can't use the stove anymore. Oh, God. Because you could just have all those burners on. Yeah. And just be like, mm-hmm, waiting for the rescue. <laughs> uh, rescue, waiting to be rescued from an inch of snow. Was that the reason for that scene? I, I, I don't, I really don't know. Huh. It, it's, it's there all. There is a lot of where it, you could tell, as stupid as the movie is, it does feel like the direct, the writer, director, co-star was like, trying to think of everything yeah. that they'd get you for. Right, yeah. That assholes like us would get you for. <laughs> but he failed so horribly at everything that everything's wrong. I'm not, I'm, I, I really don't care about the get you for as long as it's like entertaining. I watched a, a different movie that's very similar. Uh, I don't know if you watched it, it was called Sick. No, is that the Kevin Williamson written one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't watched that. It was it was okay. Okay. It was a little ridiculous, but it was like kind of funny, and it had a, a big beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> but it was like yeah, uh, uh, young people like try to. It was like it was very. It seemed very late to be commenting on pandemic stuff. Oh sure. It came out in 2022, like towards the end. It came out yeah, pretty recently towards the yeah, end of last year. Yeah, but it was like like. Uh, young people who are in college go to a cabin in the woods to like ride out the pandemic or so oh, they okay. think because it's right at the start mm. and so they have their masks and they're talking about coronavirus and it, and there's the people trying to kill them oh my god just one moment unlock the door and I don't want to spoil it but has like a little twist at the end and you know the, it has some logic to it and it has a purpose and so I'm just like I'm like, well, okay, if you have spooky haunted snow that's been poisoned by some kind of government experiment that went wrong, and it or turns something you insane, related to the plane which crash is, which that is they like mentioned. like Cabin in the Woods, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, or something related to the plane crash, whatever, whatever. Get, just have, give me some suspense, give me some excitement, um, give me some action, violence, that sort of thing. They tried uh, to spice it up a couple times with the hallucinations. That, that was like the, 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 there one was the kid only sees card. The spooky snowman. That's like a terrible CGI effect. The the hallucinations was the only play they had yeah. in the whole movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it wasn't like um, you know interesting inter character drama like uh, bodies bodies bodies. Where, oh yeah. Where it's like it feels like like it's alive and the characters are interesting and yeah. And, um, this, the, or even going back to Cabin Fever again, like whatever problems that movie has, it's so eccentric and weird that there's lots of things you remember about it. Mm -hmm. This movie doesn't have a pancakes kid. Pancakes! No pancakes! <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and it's it's just like a, like a flat line and it's so dull, you literally could have done anything with with the location and the cast. It's a good location. It's a decent enough cast. Sure. And it looks good. The cinematography is nice. It, it was just they, they were banking on, I think, an attempt at a psychological thriller that's brought on by forced sleep deprivation. Yep. Which to us Midwesterners is laughable. <laughs> um, you can survive inside of a modern structure without dying for more than two nights mm -hmm. without power. Yes. Uh, I've done it. <laughs> I'm sure you have. I think anyone in the Midwest has done it. Uh, you would have to have. I've never seen a spooky snowman come to life. No, and I, I mean, I've gone without sleep, but you have to go without sleep for quite a while to have like, really dangerous hallucinations, I think. Well, then the ultimate joke at the end of the movie, the whole idea is that they're trapped in this house because of all the snow everywhere. And then the cops just show up at the end. They just drive right up. Right, yeah. Because they couldn't do the effect of piles of snow. Yeah. But I get the point was that, you know, nobody could sleep for 
and that caused hallucinations, which, which was the threat or the horror in the movie. But then you also need to tack onto that strengths with your characters. The closest thing was the M girl who was a hypochondriac, like cut her stomach open. Oh yeah. And it was like. She's like, I got it out. Right. Whatever my, the illness was, I yes. got it out. It's like, that's, right, okay. I can see how that would be creepy. Right. Uh, the other guy just punched the one guy and he had died, I guess, or something. I, I don't remember. <laughs> but, um, but then you have the, yeah, the, the river kid who is in love with Eden. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, sort of, that sort of played out. Um, so there's a little bit of payoff there, but it's super weak. Yes. <laughs> Are you done punching down? <laughs> this movie was made by children and you're beating it up. Hey, when we were children, we also made a horror movie where nothing happened, so... That's true. We have the authority to speak on the subject. Right. <laughs> when Colton Trans, 58 like me, he can sit, he could sit with a pumpkin beer and complain just like I am. No, I just, I just see it as a, a, like a creative disappointment. Like, what? Yeah. What were you doing? Like, what, what like... I don't know. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go big. You gotta go big. You gotta double down. You gotta, you gotta make something that people remember. Like, or you make some kind of like. This feels like exploitive trash without the exploitive trash. Like yeah. I said, nudity and gore. Mm -hmm. Your two, you know, hallmarks of a horror picture. I, I, you know, if you have good characters, I don't mind the lack of nudity or gore in a horror oh, picture. Oh yeah, no, you can go simple, five people in a cabin. You just but have you to gotta, be really clever. To, this movie lacks all the meat of any kind of like what a movie needs. Mm. It doesn't have anything, with the exception of a. I don't even want to. I don't even care about the creepy moments. Nothing was creepy. The only thing that just visually looked kind of creepy there's a part where someone's looking in a closet and, and the that hand, creepy hand yeah, comes down. Yeah. It's like, that's not bad. Good job. Get three seconds of spooky <laughs> three seconds. in your 80 minute movie. <laughs> and we're out. Oh, the door sound effect showed up. Gotta mention that. Door squeak. Get it out of there. Can't use it anymore unless you're doing a comedy internet series. There is one, um, I don't know what we'll call it. We'll call it an and action moment. Or it feels like we're seeing the shot before the actors start. It's very rare, but they happen. And it's when he's- Well, they happen in movies like after last season. And action. We're, we're building up snowfalls. We're, we're saying, you could do better. You could do better, Snowfalls. <laughs> you, could, you could have made a better film, and this is why, and these are our opinions. Just don't let this guy write the next one. Uh, I didn't, he didn't write it. Someone else wrote it. He liked oh, really? He story by kind of thing. Oh. Yeah, and I saw the writer's credits, and it's like all those like junk movies you see on Tubi. Oh, okay. It's like junk Tubi movies. Clown Massacre 6 or whatever. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> Haunted House. <laughs> yeah, like with those like awful Photoshop covers. It's just like junk Tubi yeah. films. And Do you think maybe with this movie he was going for like an A24 minimalist art house thing? That's, ooh. Maybe that's what he was trying to do. I just made all my skin crawl. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of that, I thought. I'm just trying to, I, I just, I honestly don't understand what it is. I'm just trying to make sense of it. I've seen trailers for trash movies that have, that try to emulate that, that A24 vibe. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a style now as far as like trailer editing goes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, this, if that, if that's, if that was the attempt, uh, it failed <laughs> on a, on a, on a, a big, big scale. But, um, that's, I mean, whatever it was attempting to do, it failed. The fact that we don't know what it was trying to do is a sign that it failed. Yeah. <laughs> it's just such a bizarre non-movie 
It's, it's one of those where it's like, well, uh, here's a script for uh, like a cheap horror movie that's super, super easy to make. Mm -hmm. Very little like practical effects, just a couple of like little scare moments. You shoot it, I think, I think it said it was shot in six days. That um, makes sense. So it's like, uh, maybe it was like, okay, I'm pitching this to an investor. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get X amount of dollars for it. I could shoot it in six days. I'm gonna flip it. Uh, we can get it here. Uh, can it, uh, I'm gonna attach these two names to it. It's gonna make this, you know, like a, like a skim off the top, kind of made some money, move on kind of yeah. thing. But if it was an old like man in his 60s, you know, like I would, th I would think that, but considering that this, this Colton Tran is a younger guy, I would imagine he would have loftier goals than just trying to make a cheap buck like like an old 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 B movie like hack. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh sure. I would imagine he was trying to go and try to achieve something. And this feels like l l no one's trying to achieve anything. They're just trying to get through it and move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, you might be right with the A twenty four like modern horror twist. I, I really don't know. That's all I got. That's what makes it fascinating. Is that it's a fucking mystery. <laughs> It's a fucking mystery. It could be a fucking tax scam for all I know. <laughs> we spent $150 million on the movie. <laughs> it lost $149 million. <laughs> it's it's uh, just like in the movie. What, what's really going on? We don't know. What's we in that guess. snow? What's in that snow? We don't, we know. don't know. We don't know what's in that snow. <sighs> That's a good tagline for the movie. We don't know what's in that snow. Yeah, it rhymes, it's catchy. Well, I thought the title of the movie should have been, Look Out, Colds. Well, that's not bad, but can you imagine the characters going, we don't know what's in that snow. And they're going outside and they're throwing it. And it just, the camera just zooms in and the one guy goes, we don't know what's in that snow. You have like the uh, uh, Chief Brody shot in Jaws when he's on the yes. beach and we're zooming in on him. Yeah. Staring out at the water. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like like uh, uh, those nuclear uh, reactor towers. Mm -hmm. The camera, you know, booms down from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the snow's falling. <laughs> we, we show a deer in the woods, and it's like eating a leaf, and some of the snow gets in its mouth and goes, and blood starts coming out of its eyes. <laughs> don't know what's in the snow. It's just snow. Who wants snow cones? We don't know what's in. And then cuts to black. We don't know what's in the snow. The title comes in, it's spelt out in snow that's blowing through the shot. Directed by Ari Aster. So they're just snorting cocaine. <laughs> All this imagery of like powder. Yeah. Girls just doing makeup. And every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Quit being a conspiracy theorist. Just that's an actual line in the movie, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Just because this cabin is one mile away from those nuclear reactor towers and it's blowing gas this way that's mixing with the snow that's falling all around the house doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the snow we don't know what's in the snow the snowman that's on the front yard they keep cutting to it if somebody like knocks into it or, or something happens and the snow comes off and there's like a skeleton inside of it oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> sure why not ah! So many things you can do with evil snow. Instead, everyone just makes stir fry. And, and has a couple of, uh, of alcoholic beverages. But just a couple. Just a couple, not too much. No one gets really drunk. And then they all go to bed at 12.02 a.m. <laughs> on New Year's Day. Great film, 10 out of 10. Would highly recommend. <laughs> ah!